I've decided to do a little video on the 12 volt system <clears throat> in an RV. Now, this one is specific to a Geo Pro, uh, but it pretty much applies to almost every other uh, uh, RV out there. So basically, what I'm going to tell you is what the what the 12 volt system operates on these most of these RVs and campers. Now, because of the people that want to go boondocking or to a harvest host or somewhere where there's no hookups, the RV industry has tried to make everything as much as they can 12 volt. So I want to get into the details of all the things that run off of 12 volt and how to make things easier if you just want to do that and not run off of 110 and, and basically how the systems work. So I'm going to start on the outside here. And uh, in my case, I have two batteries, which is a, a good deal. Geo Pro has a two battery setup, and they also have a solar panel that trickle charges the uh, system. So if you have something like that, it's even better. But even without that type of a system, even with a single battery, you can run a lot of these systems. So starting out here on front, this is run by the 12 volt system, the uh, power jack, if you've got one of those. That's the first thing up. Any of these lights on the outside usually are run by a 12 volt system. This one here is designed so you can kind of hook up in the dark. So uh, that's pretty much on the outside run down the wall here. One way you can check to see if what's running on 12 volt is just don't plug it in and go inside and make sure your battery disconnect is on. So you can find out what runs off the 12 volt. But like I said, this is pretty standard throughout the industry. Most of these components are pretty standard on almost any, any kind of RV out there. One thing that's almost always run by the 12 volt system is if you have a powered awning system, this is run by the 12 volt system. It, it brings it out and brings it back in. Going inside, pretty much all your lighting inside is run by a 12 volt system. I'll turn that one on there. In my particular setup, all my little puck lights that are in the top are LEDs and you can turn them on as needed. But uh, all those lights that are inside your camper, unless they're plugged directly into a 110 socket, they are running off the 12 volt system. Okay, you might think he, the gas furnace is running just strictly off the gas, but it in fact does take a 12 volt. It has a blower motor that runs the 12 volt, and it runs off the 12 volt. So in most cases, that is actually run off the 12 volt setup. So you'll still need a battery charged up to run that blower on that heating system. You also have an igniter on that that's usually run by a battery of some type. What you also have is some other things that are built into the camper that are run off your 12 volt system. I already showed you the uh, retract and extend of the awning, but in your interior, interior lights, I've got a porch light and an awning light, which is an LED strip that runs down outside of here that is also run off the 110 system you also have test lights a lot of times in my case I've got a battery test fresh water black water and gray water and those are all run off your 12 volt system and you also have a water pump if you have a water pump in your camper it's run off the 12 volt system so you can use that anytime you're out and you don't have to be plugged in now you'll notice on here it has water heater, electric, gas and electric. The electric of course that's run off of when you have shore power so that doesn't run off your 12 volt system. Now your water heater if you have one the igniter on that will actually be electrically run but it, once it's lit it runs off the gas if you run it off your gas system. Now sometimes, you'll have to check these plugs out, but sometimes your camper manufacturer, they install, they put USB ports on like this here. 
and this one is run off the 110 of course the way you tick check that is plug it in when you don't have the camper plugged in and if you've got your battery disconnect on you will actually be able to uh, check that out and make sure it works on your phone or whatever you want to try, try it on. This particular unit does have an uh, inverter. This inverter will run off the batteries and it will power up some of the 110 sockets in the camper. So you can run that inverter off those batteries but it runs out really fast. So it's something that you only need for a certain for a little while and then you want to kick that off because it's going to get Gonna run your battery down and we're in a hurry. Okay, a couple of things I want to show you here. If you know you're gonna be boondocking or you're not gonna be plugged in and you have something like a CPAP, you can order these hookups from your CPAP manufacturer. They're pretty expensive, but you can plug this in. But you best must have a jack. I've had to add a few jacks to mine. You have a jack here for runs into the 12 volt. So it's that normal cigarette lighter type setup. I've actually got some USBs I've actually added to it as well. Now you'll notice that I have the same setup for the 110, but again, I have to have the camper plugged into 110 outlets and shore power in order to run this setup. Also, something you want to look at is you want to purchase lights. I've got these lights here that have a battery in them. It needs to be charged off a of USB. So you just charge them whenever we know we're going on a big trip. We'll charge them up a couple hours. And then we just shut it down. And those we don't have to worry about anything being plugged in. Again, you also can get these fans. These run off a of USB. As long as that USB is run off of your 12-volt system, it's a good setup for being off-grid. Okay, working into the kitchen section. This fan i believe works most of the rvs work the same way this is set up on the 12 volt you have a fan that runs off the 12 volt and a light that runs off the 12 volt so again that can be used whether you're on grid or off grid okay obviously your microwave will not work on 12 volt system so you can see the little light on, open it up, no light inside of there, so it doesn't work. Now your refrigerator, depends on what you have. I only have a two-way refrigerator which runs off of 110 or gas. Some people have a three-way refrigerator or they'll have one that runs off of just the 12 volt. Now these get a little more complicated because there's several different types of refrigerators. There's some that have a compressor unit in them. And sometimes that's desirable to have that compressor unit it'll get cooler faster but these gas fired ones they get colder a lot takes a lot longer but they're very efficient so again these can run this will run on the propane but it won't run off the 12 volt system and while we're here we'll look at this air conditioner and again that does not work on a 12 volt system fan or nothing will work on that Okay, working around on our entertainment system. This has a small stereo system in here, AM, FM. It'll run, uh, I think it'll run Bluetooth. This is all run off a 12 volt system. So again, don't have to be hooked up on grid. This also has a Wi-Fi booster system. That also works off the 12 volt. And I've added a system to mine, it's a Wii Boost. And uh, you may or may not have this system, but this is for boosting your cell signal. It has the option to run off of 110 or it has a 12 volt adapter. Again, you have to have some place to plug that in. So in my case, I'm using the plug that's behind my TV and that brings us to the TV. Almost all these RV units have a 12 volt TV, so it can be run without being plugged into the main power so you can have that just strictly off the battery you run that TV this one has actually a DVD player that runs through the back of it okay moving into our bathroom and here I have a max fan and it runs off the 12 volt system doesn't take any power other than the battery power to run that 
That comes in real handy when you're out and you want to pull some air through, get some air through the windows. So you might ask yourself, okay, what's very important is if you're running off just a 12 volt system, you need to be some way of monitoring that. And I would suggest if you've got a cigarette lighter, you don't have a way of monitoring. I have an actual a go power meter here that actually tell me my my volts. It tells me my battery's at 100%. And I use this guide here, and it tells you how far you want that battery to go down. It'll tell you your voltage. There it was. I got 13.1 which is way high right now and like I say as long as you're keeping this you may say 50% of 12 volt is 6 volt but it's not the case you want to look at something like this meter here you want to you want to stay above that 9 11.9 volts that's actually 40% of your battery so you don't want to drop below that you can on and for a few for a while drop down in this yellow range but i would never take it to this red range if you do that your battery will eventually just it'll just burn up the battery and it won't work anymore so you can pull this up online just pull up 12 volt battery voltage uh, gauge and you'll see that and i printed it up off the internet but you need to have some way to monitor your voltage and if you don't have this type of setup, then you want to take one, you can buy a USB, and then on one side it has a USB, and the other side it has a 12 volt meter, and that can be plugged into one of those cigarette lighters type plugs like that. I don't have one in there, but that's where the TV plugs into the 12 volt, and you can plug that into there and get you a reading and keep track of that voltage as it drops. So lastly, you'll see this thing, and we call it the converter box. There's this little piece right here. And a lot of people say, well, do I have to run that on my 12-volt system? And the question is yes and no. And what I mean by that is, if you're, you're just running strictly on 12-volt, this, this system doesn't operate at all. It's completely independent. That doesn't work at all. And what this actually does is when you actually plug in your camper, into a 110 or your your 30 amp service at a campground then automatically it it actually changes that voltage and turns everything into 12 volt that way all this 12 volt stuff that's within your camper will now work on that 110 voltage coming in and that converts it down so that's important to know that thing is that, that gets used but it's only used when you're when you're plugged into shore power and when you go off grid, that, that converter box doesn't work at all. Okay, one other thing I want to show you is the CO2 monitor. This is a CO2 alarm system. This is tied into the 12 volt system. So it will work all the time in the 12 volt system. This doesn't have a battery, it just runs off the camper 12 volt battery system. Now some people will have the we have the fire detector that runs off the 12 volt system this one here doesn't this one's strictly just a battery operated with a, just a little 9 volt battery so that will in my case doesn't run off of the 12 volt system sometimes that is hardwired into the 12 volt system sometimes it's hardwired into the 10 the 110 system but uh, you might want to check to see if that requires a battery or if it's hardwired in some way and then even check the voltage it may be a 12 volt I do know these most of these CO2 monitors are 12 volt operated. Now this is just uh, for people that have a GeoPro or a uh, system that has the Go Power set up. If you have one of these setups and you've got a solar panel tied in, it tells you how much is your, your solar panels are creating and charging your battery at any given time. It'll fluctuate depending on how much voltage the sun is given or how much power the sun's given or or it also how charged the battery is the charge on the battery now is just about full but I've got a few things running so it is actually pulling that amperage in right now which is kind of neat because I'm actually running a few things right now I've got a light running and I've got a fantastic fan so it's actually taking that 1.9 amps right out of the solar panels and running that 
Another thing to look at if you have a system like this is there's a USB sitting here right beside it. And uh, you have to make sure you got this USB symbol down here. But if you've got this hooked up, you can plug in your phone or something for that USB and you can charge it. It's directly comes from the battery and also if, if the solar panel is running, it'll pull it right from the solar panel. I will add that if you have a slide, which I don't have, what I mean by a slide is a section right here square section that'll actually slide out from the camper that's always 12 volt because they don't want you to have to worry about having being plugged in I want you to be able to open up that section and get your extra room and uh, that's something that's set up for the 12 volt system again so in conclusion there's a whole lot of things that can run off of the 12 volt system on any RV that you might have. Even the smaller RVs have setups where they can run 12 volt. It's important if you know that you're not gonna be where you can plug in a lot of times that you have things set up to run strictly off that 12 volt. You either go into a, a USB setup or a 12 volt plug type setup. These, a lot of these campers, and mine included, has a 1000 watt inverter and uh, that sounds great to run all your 110 plugs when you want to, but it really consumes battery power. If you use that, it'll run out in less than half a day most of the time. Because as soon as you turn that on, it's using power. It doesn't just use power when something's plugged in. It, it generates constantly as soon as you turn that on. So something to be aware of. Again, if you're going to do a lot of, of uh, off-grid you want to be able to utilize that 12 volt as best you can in its true form of being 12 volt. So a lot of adapters out there that can be used to do that. So I hope this has helped out a lot of people in understanding the way this system works. I plan to try to do some kind of video in the future about the gas systems in these campers and maybe even the 110 systems in these campers. We'll just have to get through those in the future. And I think this helps a lot of people out that don't quite understand how these systems work in RVs. So I hope this has helped people out. If, if it's helped you out or it's something else you'd like to ask, please put it in the comments and we'll see you again on one of our next videos.